Parish on this 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please rise at this time and join singing our opening song, I Heard the Voice of Jesus.
the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, the gifts of the Holy Spirit be with you. Good morning. And welcome to all, especially any guests that join us. A special welcome to the Bakavan family as they bring their son for baptism. We do so as the word of God reminds us that Jesus is the shepherd through whose blood we are saved. So let us prepare our hearts asking God's forgiveness of our sins. Lord Jesus, you heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Together we pray glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament of the Eucharist have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. Jesus, who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit as God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who misled and scattered the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people, you have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnants of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble, and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one, and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
of the Lord is upon me, for he sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. Jesus said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When Jesus disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And Jesus began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. It's about 10 minutes to 11 here in Milwaukee, and that means it's about 10 minutes to 12 down in Indianapolis, Indiana, the center of the United States where the Catholic National Eucharistic Revival is coming to its very end. They're ending with Mass, which began at 10 a.m., and over these past few days, as people gathered, there were over 100 bishops and cardinals. There's almost 2,000 priests. Some had to stay home to say Mass. <laughs> 50,000 other people gathered together, men, women, and families, to uh, celebrate the Eucharist. Monsignor Shea, who is the president of Mary University out in Bismarck, North Dakota said the other day as he was being interviewed at the National Eucharistic Congress, what a great event that we can get 50,000 people together not to speak about the politics of Vatican or the politics in the church, not to speak about the politics of Washington, D.C., but for one reason, and that is to celebrate Jesus in the Eucharist. A good number of people from Milwaukee, from our own parish, traveled down there, people from throughout the state of Wisconsin, and they all sort of sat together in the stadium. On Thursday night, one of our prisoners, John here, sent me a text with a banner of St. John the Evangelist Church offering Eucharistic adoration. But it wasn't St. John the Evangelist in Greenfield, it was St. John the Evangelist down near Indianapolis, a hundred years old, much like our parish is a little over a hundred years old. But here's two John the Evangelist, both a hundred years old, both offering Eucharistic adoration. And I thought how appropriate that we have these scripture readings that were picked for the church almost 70 years ago by a group of liturgists and theologians and they did not have Eucharistic Congress in mind, picking out the readings for this weekend. But how appropriate as they speak about the Good Shepherd, the Good Shepherd that will be assigned to God's people. But from that theme of shepherding comes this other theme of Eucharist. The sheep will be gathered in the meadow. The sheep will be led to the life-giving waters. The sheep will be gathered around this fabulous banquet table and that 
beautiful line from Paul's writing to the Ephesians. By the blood of Christ, people will be drawn near. What a beautiful theme to think the gift of Christ's body and blood nourishes us, brings us closer, and gives us the promise of eternal life. This is all being done in this month of July when the church celebrates one of its litanies. There's all kinds of litanies of prayers that people can pray throughout the year. But in the month of July is the litany of the precious blood of Jesus. And through some of the stanzas that are prayed over and over again, a reminder that it is through the blood of Christ that we have eternal life. And I'd just like to mention some of those prayers that flow in the litany of the precious blood of Jesus. Blood of Christ, washing us from sin. Blood of Christ, Eucharistic drink. Blood of Christ, refreshment of the souls. Blood of Christ, stream of mercy. Blood of Christ, hope of the penitent. Blood of Christ, consolation of the dying. Blood of Christ, pledge of eternal life. Blood of Christ, freeing souls from purgatory. Blood of Christ, price of our salvation. Blood of Christ, forgiveness of sins. The blood of Christ should wash away all our sense of doubt and worry because through the blood of Christ we have the promise of eternal salvation. When I came here 13 years ago and was giving out communion, I thought, ah, many funerals to be had over these years. And because of our many aged people, there is often the question of, will I be saved? Have I lived a good enough life? And it's not always that we lived a good enough life, but it is by the blood of Christ that we are saved. At the Eucharistic Congress being held in Indianapolis, this morning was a great speaker, Christus Stefanik. Many people have listened to him on radios or read his book or listened to his program. And he was telling this beautiful story about being at the bedside of his mother-in-law on her deathbed, surrounded by her family in the hospital. His mother-in-law, his father-in-law were agnostics, didn't know if they really believed in God, didn't practice much of any faith. And the mother-in-law said to those gathered, I fear hell. And Chris Stefanik, this great preacher, layman in the Catholic Church, thought, how do you respond to this? I fear hell as She's breathing her last. And he says, well, remember Jesus on the cross. One thief on the right dismissed the thief on the other. And Dismas said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And what was Jesus' response as he bled his last? But today you will be with me in the kingdom of heaven. The next day, the mother-in-law became a Catholic. The next day, the mother-in-law died. As we are mindful of the good shepherd that nourishes us and feeds us on his body and his blood, we should approach each day, we should approach our last breath, not with fear, but with great trust and great confidence. Not that we are worthy, but we have a God who is so ever generous. What is our response to the gift of the Eucharist? I think of Psalm 100, the very first words of Psalm 100. Cry out with joy to the Lord. This should be our response. This is our invitation to get rid of our depressions, our doubt, our fears. What will be of me but with joy come before the Eucharist, knowing that through the blood of Christ, our sins are forgiven. 
The pledge of eternal life is promised. The hope of the penitent is fulfilled. Blood of Christ, Eucharistic drink, is the refreshment for our souls. So let us rise as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adorned and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Because of the gift of Christ, we pray our needs in confidence. For Pope Francis and the bishops, that they may have the hearts of true shepherds and guide the church closer to Jesus and into greater unity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of God's people, that we may be witnesses to God's message, expressions of God's nurturing love, and instruments of God's healing care to all who find life's journey burdensome, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of compassion, that God will touch our hearts with care and concern for all whom we find burdensome, needy, or demanding, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who offer retreats and places of solitude, that they will assist others in finding rest and in deepening their relationship with God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve in ministry, that God will bless their efforts, help them keep their lives in balance, and work through them to show a shepherd's care, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success of our upcoming parish festival, may everyone be safe. May we have great weather and experience lots of enjoyment, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Noah, for Everett Noah Bakafen who will be baptized this weekend, and for his family, and for whom this Mass is offered, and for those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in your goodness, you have given us Jesus, his body and blood. May we always hunger and live for the body of Christ. We ask this in all our needs through Christ, our risen Lord.
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, Jesus offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by his sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. As we approach the table of this wonderful gift, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth, sing your praises. Indeed, holy Lord, you are the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which would be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
The mystery of faith. For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, Bring her to the fullness of charity together at Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we pray as Jesus taught, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus always be with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless those called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. the body of Christ. Amen.
Members of the festival committee will be signing up volunteers in the tent outside of the church front doors. They need help with setup, some games need captains, 
and the hamburger and hot dog booth needs workers. Festival is also asking for last minute donations of grocery items for the grocery booth. Please bring them to the parish office. Festival is looking for donations of bakery items. Please see the bulletin for details. As the festival begins, please join us on Saturday afternoon, July 27th, for a special flag raising ceremony at the parish pole at 3 p.m. Miss Milwaukee and Miss Milwaukee Teen will sing the national anthem, and all branches of the military will be honored. All are welcome. And scrip will be sold after all masses this weekend. Let us pray. Lord God, grant that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present time by our reception of your precious body and blood, Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, Satan, and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Mary, Mother of the Eucharist, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go and be the light of Christ in the world. Thanks be to God.